So um, I probably put something on the thumbnail pretty hideous and horrendous. Like, is this the best vanilla fragrance ever? You know, pretty, uh, pretty awful, really. But those clicks, those views, and subscribers are not going to uh, get themselves now, are they? Well, for some people they are, but that's a completely different video. Anyway, I'm really excited to bring this fragrance to you. Like, really genuinely. I haven't been this excited in quite a while to talk about uh, something that isn't really talked about and I'm glad that not many people have talked about it because that means I get to talk about it so more fun for me. Um, it's a vanilla based fragrance and I'm a sucker for vanilla. For vanilla. It is one of my favourite notes. Um, you heard me talk earlier this year about Mondolo di Sicilia by Aqua de Palma. Is this better? Mm, yeah. So, <laughs> gun to the head, yeah it is. So, this one is going to be very exciting for a gourmand lover or all a vanilla lover because this is a very thick, syrupy, genuine uh, vanilla based fragrance. I mentioned it in my top 10 full list last year. I've actually grown to love it even more from that list. So, really exciting stuff. Let's get into it as always at first with the presentation. As unassuming as this brand's presentation may be, it is actually um, littered with history. So, Le Covent de Menemies, um, awful at these pronunciations, you should know this by now, but it's actually um, under the L'Occitane group um, as a company, and you can kind of clearly tell with the presentation and, and the way that the fragrances are made, it does have that sort of simple yet distinctive homemade quality that L'Occitane are very famous for. So, Le Covent de Menemies is actually a hotel spa in province France, but what it's actually referring to is what was there before, which was a Catholic convent. And this fragrance house actually is uh, a celebration of that history. Eau de Michons is a reference to the fact that this um, convent would go across seas, go to different sort of tribal lands um, all over the world and take their religion with them. That is what this fragrance is celebrating. There's also a fragrance, something along the lines of um, Eau de Cloister or something referring to clo cloister bells. And in that uh, element, this is quite an incredible brand. It's a brand specifically um, about the history of a, a religious faction in the Catholic convent. So a very, very interesting uh, history. And when you have that in mind and you look at the fragrance afresh, and this does remind me of something that I would see um, in France, uh, in a hotel, or maybe uh, on sale at a church or something like that. It has a very homemade, simplistic, uh, basic look, but that is not unwarranted with what this is trying to achieve. Why would it be flashy or um, elaborate with such a humble uh, and simplistic story to tell? The story that is being told is primarily within the fragrance, so I'm going to let it off, actually, with the presentation, although the um, the paper here is starting to come undone, it is a little bit flimsy. But I don't really have a problem with that, knowing the context of what it is. So I'm going to give this a four out of five. Also, be aware that when you get it, it doesn't come like this. It's sort of like CK1 in the realm of you have to unscrew it and then put the atomizer in. But presentation is getting a four out of five from me. I guess that when talking about this fragrance, I should talk about the immediate comparison between this and Spiritus Double of a Knee um, from the House of Guerlain. Now, uh, that initial comparison, which I've seen um, throughout the internet on Fragrantica and Base Notes and on uh, in the YouTube fragrance uh, community, that was the initial comparison that actually got me in search of this fragrance, if I'm truly honest about it. But in terms of comparison to um, Spiritus Double of a Knee, I actually don't really see it. I see it in the dry down, there's definitely something of a similarity in the dry down, but the initial opening, the vibe, the story of what this fragrance is, they're two very different things. They're trying to achieve um, two very separate things. And I, I put that down to the fact that Spiritus Double of a Knee has two types of vanilla, hence double vanilla. The first is a Madagascan vanilla, and that is a rich but light and creamy um, vanilla that's most associated with vanilla ice cream. Um, and that's lovely and nice and gives it a light aerated feel. 
and the second is Tahitian vanilla. And Tahitian vanilla is quite boozy, quite rugged, and has an element of cherry in there as well. And that gives Spiritus Double Vanille um, a very upper class, a very expensive vibe, something that you could definitely wear at a high class event. This, to my nose, has a very Indian type of vanilla. And Indian vanilla is bold, thick, and very, very reminiscent of chocolate. It has a very chocolatey vibe, and to me it actually smells quite like vanilla extract. I said in my last year's autumn list that this reminded me of my mother baking, and that is true, that still stands. That's the sort of overall connotation that I get, which is lovely, um, because it has that sort of rich vanilla extract going on. With that, there's a lot of things that you should consider with this fragrance, and that is, it gives off a very familiar smell, and it's quite a people pleaser. You get really good feedback from it, because it is a fragrance and a smell in particular that is nostalgic, that is familiar, and that people can relate to, you know, in a big way. Everybody knows what vanilla smells like, but this really uh, is a relatable smell, more than other fra uh, vanilla fragrances that I've ever tried. Now, it's not too foody, um, it doesn't just smell as though you've thrown vanilla extract on yourself, it has a bit of cedar wood, which gives it a little bit of a oakiness and a warmth, and there's a little bit of a floral undertone that gives it a really good rounded um, smell that is both wearable, but doesn't smell, like I said, as though you've thrown vanilla extracts all over yourself, which is great. If I was going to rate this, I would have to give this purely and cleanly a 5 out of 5. Is this one of the best vanilla fragrances in the world? Absolutely. Um, I, I put my reputation on the line for saying that. It's a 5 out of 5. I'd say that the performance on this fragrance is uh, very good. In fact, no, I'd actually I'd, I'd say I'm underselling it at that point. I'd say that it's absolutely excellent. Um, projection on this, I'd say, is a really solid 4 out of 5. You're going to get a definitive scent cloud. People are going to absolutely smell you. It's very thick, very bold, as I've said previously. And that totally translates into the way that it jumps off of my skin. It can be maybe a little bit too aggressive for some, but it's great. It's really good. And for the asking price, that is quite something special. The longevity is a 5 out of 5. It's the classic, you go to bed um, wearing it and then you wake up the next morning and you still smell it. The only thing that I would say, a word of warning to the user, is this. Because of its singular note nature, as in it's vanilla, and it's extraordinarily linear, there isn't too much of a scent development, if at all, um, but that is totally acceptable in what it's trying to achieve. But because of that linearness and because of that repetitive nature of this fragrance, your olfactory system will get used to it very, very quickly. So you may have be given the illusion that it's not there anymore, it's, it's gone, maybe after a couple of hours. Trust me, it's still there, but because it is such a repetitive smell, your nose will get used to it very, very quickly. But trust me, it is still there. So to recap, projection is a four out of five, not monstrous, but absolutely excellent. And longevity, this thing is a bomb on my skin. But I could imagine that results do vary, so please test this one out. The thing that concerns me with this fragrance is forever the phrase, you get what you pay for. And with this, it is simply not true. You get so much more than what you pay for with this fragrance. The thing that concerns me is if you'd put an extra zero, it's, it's 250 milliliter for 20 pounds in the United Kingdom. That is diabolical. Um, and I think that that actually hurts this fragrance, if I'm honest. I think that... If the company had put an extra zero on the end of that figure, then everybody had gone wild for it. Everybody would have said that it's the next big thing with vanilla. The problem with being a collector, not just a fragrance, but of anything, is you can be very hypnotized by price points. You can very fall, very easily fall into the um, delusionary notion that if something is more money, if it's hundreds and hundreds of pounds or dollars or whatever it is, that that must mean that it is of equal value to that price point. But then the reverse can be said vis-a-vis, um, -vis, which is, well, it's only 20 pounds, it's only 30, it's whatever, so it mustn't be that good. This could honestly have an extra zero at the end of it and nobody would, nobody would blink. Nobody would have even thought 
thought twice about it. It's so uh, organic, so genuine, so real, all of those things, and you know that I'm very picky with that. I cannot stand overly fake synthetic uh, crap hitting my nose, but I don't get that. I get a real um, legitimate vanilla. So I, I have been, you know, collecting and involved with fragrance for over five years now, and I'm going to put my reputation on the line at this point and say that this is the most undervalued, under-evaluated fragrance ever. It is an absolute steal. That, with the performance, with all of the different things um, that I've talked about, I'm going to give this one five stars. A five out of five, and I mean it. If you are a vanilla lover, this is mandatory for you to try. If you're a gourmand lover, don't even, don't even worry about it. Go and find it.